Afternoon all, hope you're well. Well, this is the second part about fitting a gill on a net. We can see here, there's some on the floor. And you can see here, I've stitched the whole gill onto the net. See just the lint there? It's all clear. That's a nice way to do it. You can see all the way along, it's all been done. And now all I've got to do is tie up this loose end because obviously I've got a loose bit of lead line from the bottom of the gear and I've got the edge of the gill. So all I've got to do is tie all that in together. So that's what I'll now do. Easy, simple. But doing the gills properly like that, that's a lot better than just running a bit of twine through it, twiddling at the mesh. That set the net right and also a lot of the nets I use are nylons what last for 20, 30 years. You've got to do it once. It's not like some monos like nets you shoot over wrecks what ripped apart every few trips so i've always been told to do it properly like this that looked lovely doesn't it well the next bit is easy to tie in really because obviously you've got your end of your lead line with a knot and the end of your gill with a knot so all i'm going to do is wrap the lead line around the gill and pull it until them two knots come together and then go forward. Once I've gone forward, I'm going to take the bit of twine, what I stitched the lead line on with, and just do a couple of half itches just to secure it in place. So I'm now going to whip it on. I've done two, I'll do another one just for luck. I don't know why people say that, but yeah so then you've obviously got that tied together all pretty simple really isn't it what i'm now going to do is i'm going to trim that lead line off i don't want much i need like an inch or so to well i'm now going to trim the lead line you look there that lead line's ever so long and that end of the gill is about 10 inches. But I'm just gonna whip that small section so I don't need all that. If I cut off about there, that'll be about enough. Get about an inch and a quarter. Just get a, see that, soon gone. And that's trimmed short. Easy peasy. Well, I've now got it on a table. Hope you can see it better. Obviously that's the lead line. That's a little half itch. And that's using the twine off what I stitched the lead line on with. I just trimmed that short. I've still got the needle with the twine was still joined to the gill. So that's all joined together still. There's no cuts or knots or anything. That's just one bit going up the gill. And now I'm going to use the same bit to whip down here to secure that all in. That's pretty easy. All I've got to do is go under there. Do a half itch. It's not so easy to do on a table, it's easy doing it hanging, but it's not easy for you guys. So I'll, I'll do a half itch, then I'll do another half itch. I'll do that the other side of the knot, what I use for the twine to stitch the lead line in. So that'll secure that in place. Pull that tight. So you see there? That side of the knot is the knot from the user stitch the lead line on, and the other hitch I've put the other side so that pin that down so it can come and done. And now I'll start off the whipping along there to secure that to secure that all together. A lot easier when you're hanging but I'll just start going around so I'll now start whipping this obviously all you do is just keep going around Oh, 
Well, it's done about a third of an inch. So now I'm going to put my finger on it to stop that from unraveling. Now what you do is get a loop. Get a loop of twine. I normally use the same material, but you guys can't see it. It's hard to see the green against the green, but if I use a different colour, you'll be able to see it easy. So what I'll do, is I'll lay that parallel. See that? So lay that in parallel. And then I'll go round the lot. That probably won't pull as tight as if I use that fine green to whip. But you can't see it, and you can see this easy. So it'll make it easier for everyone. Well, not for me, make it easier for you. If you're not want to stop, just put your finger on the end and that'll just hold it. Just holding it while I get some more twine off the needle. And then just carry on and start again. And once I get near the end of the lead line, can you see that? Because obviously the lead line's got lead inside it. It's just popped off. So I'm not whipping over the lead line with lead in it. I'm just whipping over the outer sheath. See that? See the step? So I'm just going to do the last few wraps on there. Hold it. Cut it through, get the end of the twine, go through that loop, you can see, and I'll just pull the loop through. Oh, bugger, that's come undone on that end. But there you go, that's life. That did slip a little bit on that end, so just got to get a pair of scissors and just trim that off. Not 100%, but it doesn't look that bad, do it? Now I'll just get them two ends and trim them as well. So now the twine from the lead line is tied and whipped in. The twine from the gill was used to whip it, so none of that is going anywhere. I didn't look at that bad end, that's not 100% perfect because that slipped on the end of that lead line a little. But that didn't look too bad, do it? That shouldn't catch up. And it ain't going to come off there, that's never going to come apart in a million years, is it? So some people just leave the end and use these to tie the ends together. Well, I don't always do that. Because if you, if you tie them together, especially if you like hair and nets of things and you're drifting on the bottom, and they come fast on a heft, basically catch up on a lump of crap on the bottom, that can rip all the way along the bottom of your nets. So what you can do, is I do a lot of the time, is tie a loop in the end. That's so simple, just a standard loop. Do you see I've just done a basic little overhand knot in there? And when I want to tie the nets together, I'll just use a little fine bit of twine. I'll just go through the loop of this net, then the adjacent net, and do half a dozen granny knots. 
So if you ever come hefted, you can pull it and that'll pull apart. So that'll, so if you rip the gill off one net, they ain't gonna keep ripping along all the nets. These will part. I never had one, one of these part while general fishing and hand hauling or hauling with a net hauler. But if they come hefted, you've obviously got a lot more force. These thin bits of twine will just part. Well, that's how you put a gill on a net properly. Whether many people do it like this anymore or just twiddle it through, I think most gears, all rigged by machines now, but I thought I'd just show you how to do it properly. All right, thanks for watching. Catch you another time. See you later.